So good afternoon, guys. Uh, we are fortunate enough, like we got a uh, two times introduction. Uh, I don't know, even Sri has got that. Uh, on that note, uh, I'm Subhu and is Ryan. Um, we are here to present our product on the building real-time targeting capabilities for Capital One. Uh, before, uh, maybe like, I just skip the introduction part. Maybe like, uh, Vinod has given a quite good uh, introduction about us. All right. So. Before I directly jump into the uh, product, what we are developing, I'll just go out like how the websites and the web domain evolved. Uh, still remember, like in the late 90s or in the mid of 90s, uh, probably like uh, I sh I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of the companies have not concentrated on the websites or the web pages or the web domains of their uh, uh, business. Whereas like hardly like few companies had websites, and even I'm pretty sure like Capital One didn't have the website or web domains till the mid 90s. So from there, it got evolved. And uh, probably like in mid of 2000 or 2005 or 2006, we know that web domains got uh, emerged. And uh, most of the business started targeting towards uh, web domain. When I say web domains, it's compromise of both phone, tablets, and also the uh, online sectors. So from there, uh, I'm pretty sure like the, from 2010 or something, uh, companies have started investing more towards the um, the uh, putting up more efforts on the engineering and the uh, artificial intelligence capabilities on the web domains because like they started seeing like the evolvement of the business towards online is pretty increasing and we at the capital one side we are, our statistics and our learnings shows that uh, the business what we get from the online or what we get it from the web domains is rapidly increasing so we started moving towards the digital sector and we started concentrating more towards our digital business so on that note, the one which you're seeing now is the uh, Capital One's homepage, uh, which has a like, lot of engineering, a lot of AAS effort has been put. And you could see like, uh, this page is being like an, uh, having an extreme customer, customer experience with like, uh, uh, an intense effort of AI and also about the engineering. And me and Ryan are from uh, Cards domain. When you say like Cards comment, we are at the credit cards for Capital One. So this is the one uh, credit cards homepage, what you see for the Capital One. It's like pretty simple page, uh, sort of a static page where you can see like whole list of uh, Capital One's uh, credit cards, and you'll have an, like a simulator sort of thing where you can just like answer a simple question and then picks up and gives you a right product for you. So the product which me and Ryan are working now is to make sure that the customer experience is extreme at this page, and also to make sure that we put up a lot of uh, artificial intelligence efforts on this one, and also to make sure that we smartly act on the data whatever we have. All right, so whenever I talk about uh, this to the uh, fellow colleagues, I'm like not even the fellow colleagues, the other companies or the whenever I go for the meetups, the first question what I get to me is, why Capital One needs fast data? Why Capital One needs to be uh, the, put more efforts on the modeling? Why Capital One needs to be on the artificial intelligence side when you are like a banking? All right, uh, we have a, like a three, or like I, I would comprise as a three reasons. One is the scalable. Um, we are seeing that most of our business are turning towards digital. Uh, and that too, on the credit card side, we are like almost towards digital. Uh, most of our business aren't even like in another five to 10 years, we'll always see like all the capabilities, whatever you see at the banking, you'll be able to see it in our websites. Today, almost you see like 80 to 90 percentage of all the functionalities, whatever you can see it in the uh, real physical thing, you can see it in the online. That one reason. Second reason is we want to make sure that we have to give a custom, we have to give an, like a good customer experience, and we have to help the customers to find uh, a meaningful way to get their solution easily, and make sure that uh, whenever it's on a web page, when make sure that they make a very minimal clicks, very minimal scrolls. On that note, um, I want to just give like a couple of real time uh, fast, uh, like fast data sort of thing or the fast experience. One is the Tesla. Uh, recently, we had this experience of getting a uh, free test drive on the uh, Tesla from one of our SLTs. And uh, we have found that insane mode where it's like, uh, it took like 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3 to, three, it's, it was hardly like 3.2 seconds. And the one which uh, a uh, human being can sense, like the fastest one what a human being can sense is like a blink of an eye, which takes like 300 to 400 milliseconds. And our product capabilities is lot, lot, lot better than this one. And we want to make sure that we are compressed a lot uh, shorter than these things. 
That note, I'll just hand over to Ryan to make sure, uh, to pass on the uh, modeling capabilities, whatever we have experienced. Thanks, Sibu. Um, so to kind of uh, recap everything that Sibu has said uh, so far, um, Capital One is trying to be fast at everything. Um, and when we look at this, we can really split this into four key dimensions. Uh, the first is we need fast model data. Uh, that means the data for training the model, uh, but that also means the data for scoring the model. Um, we need uh, fast model training, so the process of actually uh, learning these insights, uh, that has to be fast. Uh, and then once we've trained the model, we need the deployment to be fast. Um, and finally, the fourth dimension is fast scoring. So uh, when we need to make a decision, it needs to be very, very fast, uh, almost instantaneous. So uh, these are the four key dimensions of, of speed that we are really looking for at Capital One. Okay. Uh, so the first part I'll talk about is uh, the fast data component. Um, so uh, because we're doing in online you know, uh, personalization, I guess, of our, of our website, uh, you know, everything has to be very, very fast. We need the, uh, when we have to make a decision, we need the most current, uh, most up-to-date data. Uh, and you know, we need it right now. As soon as it's available, uh, we need to have it so that we can make uh, the best decisions with uh, the most current information. Um, and uh, we need, so we need very low latency, but Capital One is a very big company, and we have lots of activity happening on our website. Uh, so we, uh, not just, we need not just low latency, but we also need low latency at scale. Um, and so uh, I don't know if you've noticed in the top right corner there, uh, that's Kafka. So we evaluated a couple of different open source um, messaging, data, transportation uh, technology platforms, and we stuck with Kafka. Um, I think if, um, can I get a raise of hands if, you're f if you've heard of Kafka? Okay, so uh, about a third of the room. Um, yeah, so you'll hear Kafka uh, with uh, Spark Streaming, um, Apache Flink, Apache Storm, um, and I think more recently even Apache Apex, but it was a pretty obvious choice for us. Uh, it's a really great uh, data transportation layer that, that's fast. Okay, um, so I think this is probably the part that you know, most of you are really interested in here. Um, this is the actual model training component. Um, so Capital One, you know, we're, a, we're a big company. Uh, we are really great at analytics. Uh, we're really great at dealing with data. Um, and we're a big data company. So we have a substantial amount of data. Um, just, it's just a huge amount, um, kind of mind-blowingly large. Um, so in order to be fast at model training, um, if you have a large amount of data, uh, you, need, you really have no choice but to do distributed computing. If you wanted to uh, crunch the data that we have, um, and you know, the amount of time that we want to crunch it in. Uh, on a single machine, that would just not be feasible. It could take days or, or weeks or more. Um, so distributed computing is really at the heart of being fast at, at model training. Um, we have a lot of Spark talent in-house. Um, Spark has kind of exploded over the years, over the past you know, year or so even. Um, pretty much everyone you know, knows Spark. Uh, we have a lot of, a lot of Spark developers and, and uh, data scientists at Capital One. So, uh, we really wanted to find a technology that could work well with Spark and that existing expertise. And so sparkling water was kind of an, uh, kind of an obvious choice for us. Um, we also like sparkling water or, or, and chose to stick with it because um, it's very easy to, to use on the public cloud. Uh, so um, you know, we, uh, we want to be really mindful of, we want to have you know, the largest computing capabilities that we can, uh, but we also want to be mindful of cost. So uh, when we're not using a cluster, uh, we, you know, we, don't, we don't need a cluster. We can scale it down or scale it up as we need when we're using it. Um, so it was really important for us to have a uh, technology that would work, uh, you know, that would have an elastic scaling, uh, you know, uh, uh, enlarging or you know, downsizing capability. Uh, and, and H2O was really perfect, and Sparkling Water was a perfect fit for that on a public cloud. Um, and so all of these things, uh, they basically enable uh, parallelism. So, um, you know, so you can build models faster. You can train multiple models uh, in parallel using grid search. Um, and all this is possible with, with the uh, ease of use and capabilities of sparkling water. OK, so that's fast, fast model training. Uh, so I've talked about fast model data, uh, fast training, and now I'll talk about fast model deployment. Um, so we, you know, the customer landscape is constantly evolving. Uh, we want to have the, uh, we want to offer personalized experiences on our website. Uh, but you know, customer preferences are changing. Um, you know, the data itself can be changing. Uh, so we need a model that can keep up with those changes. Um, and we need our model needs to adapt with the evolving customer landscape. Um, so you know, once we we built our model with sparkling water, um, we need to not just take it from our 
analytical environment, but we need to put it into production uh, you know, right away. Uh, so basically, uh, so if, actually, if you let me go on a bit of an aside. Um, if you, if you uh, were at the recent Spark Summit, um, I think that was in New York, or maybe the, the most recent one was in San Francisco, but earlier this year there was one in New York. Um, there are a couple of really good presentations about uh, companies that specifically focus in online advertising. Um, and I found some of those really interesting. Some of those companies, I won't name them specifically, but uh, they'll do uh, you know, model refits, uh, not just daily, but even maybe hourly in some really extreme cases. Um, so we kind of look to those companies as, as good examples, because that's what they focus on, and they're very good at that. Uh, so uh, we wanted to be able to build models, uh, not just train models, not just very frequently, uh, but you know, daily. Uh, and we wanted to you know, take those trained models from our analytical environment as a POJO and put it in our production environment uh, and do this in a way that's automated so we don't have a lot of people touching or approving things. Uh, just, you know, kind of, it doesn't require any human intervention at all. Um, so one of the reasons we really liked H2O is, uh, I'm sure most of you are aware, uh, is the POJO. So it's a plain old Java object. Um, a lot of our technology stack is Java. Um, we also use a little bit of Scala. Um, so while our data scientists might know Python or R, um, you know, our, our developers, our software and data engineers know uh, these JVM kind of languages. Uh, and so we really have a nice kind of interface between the two. So uh, yeah, you build your model, you, you do your uh, feature engineering, your model uh, tuning in, in either you know, Python or, or R, uh, and then the developer gets something that they know and are feel comfortable with, which is, uh, which is a Java object. So uh, we had a, one of the keys to being really fast at model deployment was to have this seamless point of integration, and the POJO really enables that. OK, um, this is, uh, from a technical perspective, this is probably maybe one of the most interesting challenges that we had. Um, so uh, you know, anytime someone is visiting the website, we have to be able to react very, very quickly. Uh, we didn't want there to be a noticeable uh, delay. Um, so and just to, uh, I think Subi touched on it briefly. Uh, I think the, the human eye, uh, or the, the human blink, is about 300 or 400 milliseconds. Um, that's probably the fastest thing that we can consciously do. Um, we wanted to get our latency in, uh, under 100 milliseconds. Um, so there are a lot of really interesting uh, engineering problems that we had to overcome to get, to get here. Um, this uh, engineering challenge was made easier by our uh, JVM-based model. So POJO, uh, Java is very, very fast. Um, that helped us make, you know, generate our model predictions really fast. Um, and then we had these trade-offs between uh, model predictive power and uh, runtime complexity. So you know, I think there was a demo yesterday. And in, in fact, there'll be a few talks uh, after this one about deep learning. Uh, deep learning is great. It's very, very powerful. It has a lot of great predictive accuracy. Uh, but by definition or by design, it's huge. So um, when you have to score something and you need to do it very, very, very fast, uh, there's kind of that trade-off. So uh, for that reason, we decided to go with gradient boosting. Gradient boosting kind of solves everybody's problems. It's very popular. It's easy to use, easy to tune, um, and it's not too large. So uh, that worked really well for us. And uh, Subi will talk about our, uh, quickly our infrastructure tech stack. All right. Thanks, Ryan. So this is, our, uh, this is how our system or the application is standing today. So uh, the visitor, it can be even a customer or a new customer or a non-customer, uh, comes and visits our website. Um, so we have chosen this uh, API, uh, REST API. Uh, that is, when I go in deeper, it's like a Java REST API as an interface for the model on the website. The reason for choosing a Java API is like we have an uh, in-house uh, API that has already been built for us, so we want to reuse that one. And also, we have chosen that H2O, so the H2O POJO has made our task a bit easier for using an API. And also, like as Ryan mentioned, for the data, we have, cho we have chosen Kafka. So on that note, we have, uh, all right, so I just want to mention one other point. So we are uh, putting our or deploying our everything on the uh, cloud. The reason is like we want it to be like more scalable because like the customers is keep on increasing for our business on the websites, and also like our client who is going to be like uh, the website or the web page is going is already there in the cloud, and we have uh, as Ryan mentioned we have our response time should be le less than 100 milliseconds, and we don't want uh, us to be staying in the on-premise server and they coming reaching it from the cloud to on-premise through the proxy, and that even takes like 100 to 200 milliseconds. So on that note, uh, we, have we, have we have taken a uh, stand on the cloud, and we have taken a uh, Java API, REST API sort of thing as an interface between H2O and the websites. And we have chosen as an H2O for our modeling, and we have taken a Kafka for our data uh, works. 
Okay, what, what is our roadmap? Uh, what, what we are trying to achieve in the upcoming days? Uh, as of now, we are just have like, an, uh, like, a per, uh, like a static model which has been running, but we want to make sure that we have like a multiple model and we are, want to make sure that we use a multiple model and uh, we also want to uh, have like, an uh, like a model training to be on a day-to-day -day basis. And also like explore new technologies, yep. Uh, when we started this project like long back, like uh, five to six months back, we almost had a like, completely different stack so on the technological side. But we, we made like so many POCs and made sure that these are all the technologies that is going to fit for my particular uh, application. And incorporate the new data sources. Yes, the data sources is keep on increasing for us. Uh, uh, it, it can be like a new, uh, new data source that is going to come for me like in the upcoming days. So we should be like, uh, the technological choices, whatever we make should, make, should make sure that the data sources, if I'm getting a new data source or something, it should readily accept that and should not have more code changes. Resiliency and failover capabilities, yes. And uh, this particular product is like a direct customer facing. So we want to make sure that uh, the failover rate is like pretty less so that like, I don't lose our business or I don't lose our product on the uh, uh, front end. And the make API faster, yes, we are on the API world, and we want to make sure that uh, the uh, uh, API is as faster as possible. Whatever it's like less than 100 milliseconds, it's like a pretty, pretty good for us. All right, uh, this should be our last slide, sort of, and uh, we want to share our learnings. Uh, when we started this project, like, we uh, decided to keep it as simple, we as an agile company. Uh, we try to deliver like as th as thin slices as possible. So that is our that is that is our main learning to keep it simple more most of uh, on the technology side and also on the delivery side. Technological changes, yes, we do. Uh, we, we are not stick to any technology on a company wide. We always stick to the technology on the use case wise. Flexibility on the cloud. We have made so many experiments on the cloud and made sure that cloud is a right fit for us for all its flexibilities and all its options, whatever we get from the cloud. Small empower teams, yes. Uh, this whole product has been built by like, just like me and Ryan, and we just have one of one product owner for us. Like it's like an uh, usual. Uh, usually, it used to be like uh, six engineers with one product owner and then one scrum master sort of. That's a model we follow. But it was like a small empower team where it's like two engineers. We just started with the two engineers and one product owner, and we are able to uh, wrap this particular product. All right, I think we don't have any time to take up the questions. Probably like we are just right over here. Feel free to reach to me or Ryan or, my, or our product owner for any questions you have.